I'm here at the 2023 Inna Shannon Steam and Vintage Rally. Behind me is a 1912 Marshall steam engine. This morning, we're gonna be cold starting her. My name is Ben Tompkins, I'm from Carlow, and this is our 1912 Marshall steam traction engine. It was built in Marshalls in Gainsborough in August in 1912. Um, the engine name is Uncle George. It's had that name ever since its working days. The original family that had the engine had an, an uncle called Uncle George, and that's how the engine got its name. Marshalls in Gainsborough had, at the peak of their working time, 11,000 workers in their factories. They had basically employed the whole town of Gainsborough. And this engine here behind me is no, engine number 59435. So when you think about that, it's the 59,435th engine built by Marshalls, and that's in 1912, at the height of the peak of steam engine building in England. So there were still engines made after that, which is huge, huge numbers. It's a seven horsepower engine, a single cylinder, and it was used for tra uh, steam trashing and saw benches and general haulage for the majority of its life. So the first thing we're gonna be doing this morning is we're gonna clean the tubes in the steam engine. So the tubes are pipes that run up through the boiler, and the tubes carry all the smoke from the fire up through the boiler, which heat all the water. All of these tubes are surrounded by water in the boiler. The smoke comes from the fire up through all the tubes and all the heat and goes straight up the chimney. So the first thing we have to sweep out the tubes, with the smoke box door is open. All the tubes get kind of sooty as we're working the steam engine from day to day. So by cleaning the tubes, it allows the smoke to freely travel up through all the boiler tubes and heats the water more efficiently. So my father and I bought this engine in 2013 in Chevening in England. Um, when we bought the engine, it was in good condition mechanically, very good condition mechanically, but it wanted some work cosmetically. So as you can see, it has a fairly fresh paint job. It was done in 2015 over the course of the year. We didn't do any steam rise in 2015. We took the engine completely apart. We had it down to a bare boiler and the back head. Um, we cleaned all the motion work, put new lagging on it, new steel lagging, so underneath here is timber, new steel lagging, uh, fresh paint on all the wheels and all the lagging, new rubber, new chimney, and in general, just a general clean up of the steam engine. Um, and as you can see, it looks a lot better today than it, than it did back then. And the next job is to rake out the ashes. So firstly, we need to rake the fire, rake down any cinders that are in the firebox from yesterday. So we get our poker or our rake, and we rake down any cinders that might be in the fire from yesterday, the very same as you'd rake a fire at home. So all the cinders have fell down through the grate into the ash pan, and then we need to rake out the ashes. So the engine behind me was owned by a trashing contractors in, in Chevening in England, in Seven Oaks. It was owned by a contractor called Hobdens. They were huge trashing contractors all around Surrey. And the man that used to originally drive the engine was called Ernest Jones. Ernest was on the engine all its life and all its working days. And there's a few pictures here of the, Ernest on the engine, working it and a few ricks of hay behind him. So I'm after throwing a drop of diesel now on a dirty rag, and now it's time to light the fire. So we put it into the firebox then for a bit of draft. And once the rag is going fairly well, we drop it down onto the grate. Nice and easy. And now it's time to start putting on some sticks. So as you can see, we're here at the Inna Shannon Steam Rally. Steam rallies in general started in Ireland in the late 1960s, the mid-1960s to late 1960s. And what steam rallies are all about is the preservation of old machines, enthusiasts gathering together, chatting about our machines, giving us tips and hints, and working basically on keeping steam alive in Ireland. Steam in general around the world formed the world. Without steam, we wouldn't have anything we have today, and people sometimes may forget that. So it's important to make sure that people realize what these machines did for our farming heritage, for our industrial heritage, and what kept the world moving. Not too long after putting the sticks into the firebox, we were paid a visit by local contractor Mark Troy. He was doing the rounds of the field, filling up all the steam engine's boilers with water. 
And not too long after that, we had another visitor, John Keneally, who was driving around the field, dropping off coal for the steam engines. Keeping, all right. Good, good, good to see good. you. How's things? Yeah, great. You got the weather anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve it. Come on, you want? And so now it's time for a shovel of coal. So now that the fire is lighting, it's time to do a little bit of cleaning. So now it's time for a bit of the old reliable brasso to clean up all the copper and brass. So because steam engines are open crank engines and all the motion work is exposed, we have to oil everything manually by hand. So these are all the oil pots that oil all the motion work, the connecting rod, the little end, the big end, all the different parts. And over here we also have what's called an oil pump, a mechanical oil pump. And this works on a ratchet system, it's full of what's called cylinder oil, a really thick heavy oil, and it pumps oil along this copper pipe into the steam chest, into the valve and into the piston and that lubricates the valve and the piston as the steam engine is working. So you might be thinking that the wheel, the rubber on the wheels of this engine doesn't look very original and you're right, but it's done for a good reason in preservation, just to make the ride a little bit smoother and to make it easier on the engine. The, wheel, the rubbers on the wheels of this engine is, are done by vulcanising rubber to the wheels by a company in England called Reliant Rubber. And the way that it's made is that the rubber is wrapped onto the wheel in such a way like cling film, not quite as thin but a little bit thicker. You wrap around the wheel and build up the thickness of rubber. The wheels then are all put into a huge big oven and are baked onto the wheel so it sticks the rubber to the steel of the wheel. So once the wheels come out of the oven, everything is allowed to cool and the wheels are put onto a huge face plate then on a lathe. They're bolted up to the face plate and all the shapes and grooves and curves, whatever we want the, wheels, the way the wheels to be done, they're all cut into the wheels and they're finished off on the lathe. So while we were waiting for the engine to heat up, I was invited in to Ben's family's living wagon for breakfast. They built this guy from the chassis up and they live out of it when they're attending any steam rallies. So now that we're up to working pressure, we're at 150 pounds per square inch. The safety valves are starting to lift and we're ready to go do a day's work. When you're starting an engine for the first time, you also have to pull what's called the petcocks. That opens valves up on the steam chest and drains any condensation out of the piston. If you did not do that, everyone knows that water cannot compress and therefore the piston will compress the water and it could blow the end off the end of the cylinder. So we open the drain valves with the petcocks and that drains the water. So I'm releasing the handbrake here now. That winds a band off the wheel and the engine is ready to move. So now I'm gonna put the engine in full forward position. The engine will start to move and I can now open the throttle. So now I'm gonna change the engine from low gear into high gear by sliding this lever over. And now we're ready to go drive. All right, hold on now just in case of it. Thank <laughs> you. 
So now as we're driving along, I can open and close the throttle. That'll show off the steam into the piston, and I can open it back up and go again. Video the fire, we're driving along. So this is my father here beside me, his name is Ben as well, and we're both members of our club called Celtic Steamers. Celtic Steamers is a group of steam engine enthusiasts from all around Ireland. We were established in 2001 with a general basis around Carlo, and what Celtic Steamers is all about is including everyone who's interested in any way in steam engines or vintage rallies or anything at all to come along and drive a few steam engines and help out at steam engine road runs, steam rallies, and everything is about raising a bit of money for charity. So I'd like to round off this video by saying a huge thanks to Ben and Benny Tompkins. Without them, this video wouldn't have been possible. As well, I'd like to thank anyone involved in the organisation of the 2023 Inishannon Steam Rally. The sun was shining this year, it was lashing rain last year, so it was great to see such a good turnout. There was 50 steam engines showed up in total, which is about one-fifth of all the steam engines in Ireland, which is a very impressive number. Now, the steam engines were obviously the centrepiece of this event, but there was also hundreds of vintage cars and dozens of vintage tractors there as well as an auto jumble and a fun fair. It's a brilliant event and if you're ever around Cork for the June Bank holiday weekend, I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Good luck.